Something I can always appreciate is a game that was designed specifically for one platform in mind to take advantage of what it has to offer. Some notable and obvious examples of this on past consoles include Wii Sports, Nintendo Land, or even the much maligned 1-2 Switch. There are smaller examples of that concept as well, but I know almost everyone can relate to at least one of those. In Steps Vitamin Connection, a game that sets out to take full advantage of the Switch Joy-Con controllers packaged in a very kid-friendly, cooperative two-player story. I found this intriguing because while I love the Switch as a console, I think a lot of people would agree that the Joy-Con controller is easily the weakest part of it, at least when playing with just a single Joy-Con itself. My initial skepticism did go away and I'll explain why, so let's take a look. The game features two main modes, the first being a story mode and the second being a minigame mode involving anything you've unlocked already by playing the story. That formula is nothing new, but it was nice that there were some additional distractions to help with the replay value. Definitely note that while this game is completely intended to play with two players, it can also be played entirely with just one player using a pro controller, but the save files are actually treated separately. In story mode, each player takes the role of Vita Boy and Mina Girl, who control a ship of sorts after being swallowed by the family in the story when they get sick. Each level involves the players attempting to navigate the insides of the various sick family members, often shooting bacteria and viruses that are in the way. There are usually a set of three target locations to visit on each of the chapters in the story that are essentially mini games to beat before advancing within the level. This is where the game shines in my opinion. The mini games themselves are Wii-esque levels of creativity, but are also completely polished unlike so many games of that generation. The entire game also features asymmetric gameplay, with player A doing one thing or two things like steering the ship and shooting a laser beam, and player B rotating and powering the ship. I felt like the core game mechanics, as well as the minigames themselves, all controlled very well and were incredibly responsive. The minigames featured a huge variety of Joy-Con specific abilities, even using the IR sensor at times, which caught us both off guard completely. Also, once unlocked, they can be replayed outside of story mode and are deeper than what you might think. I don't want to give away too much here, as the joy of being introduced to a new game WarioWare style was a lot of fun. In terms of the story, the music, and the Saturday morning cartoon aesthetic, the game is definitely intended for kids, so keep that in mind if you're thinking of buying the game for your collection. Because of the cooperative nature of the game, I think it works best if you're a parent while teaming up with a younger child, but I can't speak for that myself. Also, this reference might be dated, and by might be I mean it is, but I got a lot of Magic School Bus vibes while playing, both in terms of the story and the intended age of the audience. I can't help but think that Miss Frizzle shrunk us down to teach us about bacteria and viruses, but things got a little out of hand. Vitamin Connection scores an 80%. The game successfully made something different, highlighted by the accessible and polished gameplay. Quite frankly, the minigames here are better than almost everything I touched in Super Mario Party. They were simply fun and creatively took advantage of every feature the Joy-Cons had to offer. The game doesn't strike as much of a chord with me as it probably should have, just because it is definitely a kid's game, but it's a must-buy if you are in need of an inexpensive, family-friendly game that everyone can enjoy. Chop, chop,